In America, we fly a lot, and we fly more and more every day. Just last week, TSA reported that we had the busiest Thanksgiving on record. Over 18 million people traveled by air in this country last week, representing a 6% increase from last year. So it should come as no surprise that the US aviation industry emits more than 200 million metric tons of greenhouse gases every year. And with all of us traveling more, we're set to more than double our aviation emissions between now and 2050. So what can we do to reduce our emissions? Well, we can phase out our current fleet of aircraft and introduce new aircraft and new airplanes that are up to 30% more fuel efficient. We can also streamline airport operations, right? So that fewer airplanes are sitting idle on tarmacs. But the real change happens when we make our fuel more sustainable. This means that we are switching out fuel that is derived from fossil-based feedstocks like crude oil, and instead using sustainable fuel, sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF, made from renewable or waste feedstocks. The uptake of sustainable aviation fuel could reduce aviation emissions by up to 65% by 2050. So to meet our travel needs, we currently consume about 26 billion gallons of jet fuel every year. And again, with us traveling more, that number is going to increase to about 30 billion by 2030. Almost all of our jet fuel today is fossil-based. Priced at $2.50 per gallon on average, our jet fuel market will be worth about $75 billion by 2030. Back in 2021, the US set an ambitious target to be able to produce enough SAF to cover 10% of our jet fuel needs by 2030 and 100% of those needs by 2050. Today though, US production capacity is at about 1% of those targets. In 2024, we are on track to produce about 30 billion, excuse me, 30 million gallons of SAF. So many of you might see these numbers and feel daunted and say, wow, there's a lot of work to be done in the next six years. I look at this and I see a meaningful market opportunity. Earlier today, you heard from Dr. Vanessa Chan, who shared more about our pathways to commercial liftoff efforts. Really, these liftoff efforts are meant to answer one single question. What will it take for us to collectively scale these critical clean energy technologies into a commercially viable market? Well, for SAF, it'll take three things. First, we need to bring at least eight to 12 commercial scale SAF production facilities online between now and 2030. Second, we need to sign long-term offtake agreements that will provide the revenue certainty needed to attract investment dollars into those production facilities. And third, we need to shore up and expand supportive SAF policies at the state, federal, and international levels. Now the good news is, we have a lot of tools already here in the United States that will help us scale up SAF supply. We have abundant feedstocks available. As many of you know, SAF can be made from a variety of different feedstocks. It can be made from fats, oils, and greases like beef tallow and used cooking oil that we can collect from our food industry. SAF can be made from crops like soybeans and corn grown primarily in the Midwest. SAF can also be produced from municipal solid waste or woody biomass that we can collect from timber plants in the southeast. And let's not forget that SAF can be produced using just captured carbon dioxide, water, and clean electricity. In addition to all of these amazing feedstocks, America also has a significant refinery infrastructure that it can tap into to help us produce SAF at scale. We can upgrade and expand existing refineries and this here is a picture of the Montana Renewables Biofuels Facility, which is one of four facilities already producing SAF today. We not only have the infrastructure needed to produce SAF, we already also have the infrastructure needed to blend and transport it. One of the many benefits of SAF is that it's a drop-in fuel replacement, 
meaning that it can be used in the same pipelines and fueling stations and aircraft as fossil jet fuel. We really don't need to build that much from scratch. Now finally, America has a world-class workforce in that we already have the agricultural and chemical and mechanical and construction and operational expertise that we really need to scale SAF production. And the job opportunity here is massive. If we were to hit our 2030 targets, the SAF industry could employ up to 70,000 people. And let's not forget that many of these jobs will be in rural and agricultural communities in which the production and collection of those feedstocks I mentioned is paramount. Okay, so we have the feedstocks and we have the infrastructure and we have the workforce to scale SAF supply. What's the holdup? Well, in a word, it's cost. SAF costs between two and 10 times more than fossil jet fuel. Now, part of this is due to the fact that SAF production technologies are more nascent and they haven't benefited from learning curves. But the other part of it is a little bit more systemic. The costs of the clean feedstocks that I talked about are inherently more expensive than crude oil. And so for airlines that operate with single digit margins, it becomes difficult to procure this clean but more expensive fuel at scale. Fortunately, there are a variety of different levers that we can start to pull to scale SAF offtake. Let me maybe walk you through one example. This is an illustrative example of SAF that's produced here in the United States and sold in the state of California. So to offset part of these unit production costs, a SAF producer might be able to sell its credits that it earns under state level and national clean fuel standards perhaps to oil and gas companies that can't meet those standards themselves. The production cost could be further decreased thanks to the value of different tax credits issued at the national level or also the state level. And I'm thrilled to share that there are more and more state level SAF and clean fuels tax credits being implemented every day. Much of the re residual green premium can be further bought down by scope three off takers. There are a variety of different corporates out there that are interested in offsetting their emissions associated with business travel and other operations. Now, they're less interested in the fuel, but rather more interested in the emissions benefit associated with that fuel's production. A certificate that represents that emissions benefit could cost anywhere between $100 and $1,000 per ton, depending on the SAF feedstock technology, location, and carbon intensity. So that then leaves us with the airlines who could potentially be able to procure this fuel at or near price parity with fossil jet fuel. We're already beginning to see some of these multi-party offtake agreements unfold in the market thanks to early movers like Citi and the members of the Sustainable Aviation Fuel Buyers Alliance. And I think I've seen a few of them out in the audience. But we need many more of these transactions if we are to scale up SAF. Now, I'll also call out that voluntary demand isn't limitless. We will also need to ensure that SAF that's produced domestically here in the United States can qualify for SAF mandates overseas. Currently adopted and proposed mandates could draw as much as 2 billion gallons per year of SAF demand. And this number is going to increase significantly in the years after 2030. Already, we're beginning to hear about U.S. producers who are planning to produce their SAF here in the U.S., taking advantage of the resources that I mentioned, and ship it overseas so that it's eligible for these mandated programs. But these plans are introducing a lot of transport-related costs and transport-related emissions. A book and claim system will allow a producer to be able to book its emissions benefit here in the United States and for a customer to claim that emissions benefit elsewhere in the world. This will not only reduce the logistical burden of transporting the fuel, but it will also open up the SAF offtake market to airlines under mandate programs, as well as to a variety of different scope three offtakers worldwide. I'm almost at time here and it's been a long day and I've been holding back on a lot of my SAF liftoff puns. So I'll conclude with just a few. For SAF to take off, we need to collectively appreciate that we are not just passengers on this plane. 
we are part of the flight crew. And we have our heading for how we can help reduce the perceived cost of SAF and tap into the resources already at our disposal. Now, I can't promise that this will be easy. There might be some turbulence on the way. But if we each do our part collectively, by 2030, SAF will be cleared for liftoff. Thank you.